Hello everyone, I am here today to talk about the Panasonic Lumix camera that we check out from PEPS at Carleton College. Um, here is the Panasonic Lumix. Um, it's a really cute little camera and it actually is a 16 megapixel camera, so it's a very, very decent little camera. Um, what we're going to do is go through the basics first and um, after we're done with the basics, if you're confident with them, then you can stop watching the video when I say stop watching. Um, if you want a little bit more of an in-depth how-to thing, or if your pictures are coming out really horrible and you want to know if there's a weird setting happening, um, then you can continue on with the rest of the video. So let's start with the basics. Um, we're going to talk about what happens when you get one of these little cute cameras from Peps. Um, the first thing is that you get the camera and it comes in a bag. In the bag, the camera, a nifty little charger, and if I unzip and open this up, a USB cable, a battery, and in the camera itself, on the bottom, there's a little, little latch here, it comes with a 16 gigabyte SD card and a battery actually in the camera. So that's right, you get two batteries, a charger, SD card, USB, the camera, and the case. So just be in mind that all of these things actually are included in the camera, and on the back of the bag tag, which actually has the little CCID number on it, there's actually included um, a price list of everything that's in here. So if you borrow this stuff, make sure it's all in here, make sure it matches this. If it doesn't, yell at the PEPS worker and uh, make sure that everything is in there the way it's supposed to be. That being said, let's get into this a little bit. Inside the camera, we're going to put this USB card back in it. It actually has a little explanation of how the card is meant to go in if you look at it very closely. We'll put a battery in it, <clears throat> battery in there, this little latch happens, close, and now you're good to go. On the camera there's a couple little things to know about. It actually closes its own lens when it's off. To turn it on, you actually just turn on the little switch. It has a zoom, so you can do wide angle, which would be the W, and T, which would be the telephoto which means close, getting close when you're far away, and having a nice wide-angle shot, landscape, portrait, it's a whatever you want to call it. Um, on the top also is the shutter button, so if you push this down, it'll make a picture. It just made a very embarrassing picture of my tummy. And over here is the e-zoom. Uh, basically, if you are too tired to do something like this and something like this, you can push that and it'll automatically zoom on something in the focus screen, but it's really annoying when you let things do automatic things when really you shouldn't have to do that. Um, moving on, here's the screen in the back. It has a nice big screen. It has a couple of little buttons. Uh, the one you really want to worry about is this one here. It actually has the red camera, which means it's ready to make pictures, and it has the play button. And uh, there's that picture I just made of my tummy a little while ago. So you can actually scroll through your pictures that way if you turn it on the green thing. The red thing is when you actually are making pictures. All of our cameras are set to automatic and you should be able to go. That being said, any kind of equipment that is borrowed, uh, sometimes people can do weird things to settings. If you are making pictures and they all look really, really horrible and you want to know what's going on, you should continue with this video and I'll go through some of the settings. If it's making good pictures and everything's happy, well, then you're at the end. You can stop watching right now. Still here? Okay, fair enough. Let's go through some of the settings on the back of this camera. Uh, there's a few things. The first button up here is called Mode. Um, if I hit Mode, you'll actually see that there's a couple of different settings. There's, first off, it should be set to the Intelligent Auto. What that means is basically it's going to try to do the best it can and make a good picture for you. The next one is Normal Picture. This basically is still auto. It still does most of the things, uh, but it's not quite as intelligent. Don't ask me, I didn't make this up. My scene mode. You can actually set specific modes in the camera and save them to the camera's memory. Uh, typically I wouldn't do this because Lord knows what's going to happen if you do this, uh, but if you uh, borrow a camera for the four days and you are really, really shooting a lot and you want to make a lot of specific kinds of pictures, um, I suppose you can uh, scroll through that. I'm not going to do that today. Scene mode, this is again some sort of, it's a basically a programmed thing, uh, daylight, auto, uh, cloudy, um, a whole bunch of other choices. Uh, and then motion picture, this camera is um, actually able to shoot video. It's not the best video in the world, so if you are going to shoot video, borrow one of our other cameras that Peps has that's actually specifically for video. I'm going to leave that on Intelligent Auto because that's what it's meant to be right now. 
Again, if you're making pictures and they look horrible, you might want to check some of those settings and make sure it's on the correct thing. All right, so let's talk a little bit about this little spinning wheel. This little spinning wheel is all the menu stuff. Um, you can actually go into the menu by pushing here and push it again, and here's a whole bunch of different things that can happen. Um, that's fine. Wow, look at all those choices. Um, that's just pushing the center button. I'm not going to talk about the menu items itself. I'm going to talk about the things that are around the outside of this little scroll wheel. First, I'm going to talk about flash. There's actually a couple of different flash settings that this camera has. Uh, you can turn off the flash or you can have auto flash. Flash fires automatically. That means if it's really bright outside, it's not going to go off. Um, and if it's really dark, it will. Force flash off means that, hey, maybe you're making a picture and you want it to be a specific sort of color and the flash would ruin it, then you can always turn it off. Now, let me talk a little bit about something because this is really important. There are more choices. If I push the mode button and get out of the intelligent auto and pick the camera and then go back to that flash setting, suddenly we have a lot more choices. What is this all about? Well, Intelligent Auto is for kind of anyone that's just doing a normal thing. They're not really interested in being photographers and they just want to make some pictures of their friends having a good time, what have you. But the regular auto lets you have a whole bunch of different choices. In this choice now with the flash, we have auto flash. We have red eye reduction. So again, this will do that little pre-flash thing and then flash for real, which will get rid of the red eye from people's um, eyeballs. That's always kind of a nice setting to have. The force flashed on, why would you use a force flash? Well, occasionally you're making a picture and the person's in shade or they're inside something and they're standing in front of a very bright window. Well, the camera, because it's a camera, it's not quite as intelligent as the human eye, will actually set its exposure to make sure that the outside picture looks good and the inside picture is this weird dark silhouette. So you can actually turn the force flash on and make a picture and that'll actually light up the person that's in front of the bright window. So that's why you would use that. Uh, then again, you have the force flash off. This is in case you really want to make sure that the flash doesn't go off. One thing to think about, and this is something a lot of people don't know when they're using these little cute cameras, is that the flash is really only good for about maybe 8 to 10 feet. If anything's further away from you than that, the flash isn't going to hit them and it's just going to be really horrible. Um, that's why there is a force flash off. If you're a little bit further away from your subject and it's kind of like, you know, it's dusk outside or it's getting dark, uh, the flash will fire and then it just won't even light up the subject because they're too far away. If you turn it off and then make a picture, it'll actually fight really hard to make a very, very good, evenly exposed picture. Uh, and so you might actually have a better picture if you turn it off. That's again, only if you're about 10 feet away. If you're closer, heck, use the flash. It'll do a good job when it's dark outside. So those are all the different flash settings. I'm actually going to set this back to auto because that's what it should be when you check it out from PEPS. All right, let's talk a little bit about the little flower symbol. What is the flower symbol? The flower symbol is macro setting. What a macro is, is basically close-up photography. So if I want to take a picture of something close up, I'm actually holding the camera here, um, it's just seeing the dark thing. If I want to take a picture of this battery, and I get it really close to the battery, it's pretty blurry. It's not doing a very good job. I can actually do a little wide angle, see if I'm, on. oh, no, still not doing a very good job. But if I turn on the macro, all of a sudden, it can focus on it. Wow, isn't that cool? So again, the macro is for close-up stuff. How did I focus? I just pushed the shutter a little bit so that it actually took a look at it, and then it focused. I'm going to turn back off the macro because really it shouldn't be on. A lot of times what happens is if you're making pictures and everything is always blurry, it's because somebody left the macro on. So turn that off if you're taking normal pictures. This is only for close-up work. The other thing to talk about is this little timer symbol. The timer symbol is for auto timing, auto shooting. And you have a couple of different choices. If I toggle up, you have a 10 second delay, which means that when I push the shutter button, it won't go off for 10 seconds. It has a two second delay, which I don't understand why, because no one is quite that fast unless you are Flash, the superhero. So basically, set it to 10, push the shutter button, it'll take 10 seconds before it'll make a picture. Do, 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 do. It speeds up. Oh, there, it made the picture. Woo! Okay. So that's what the auto picture is for. That's if you want to be in the picture with other people. It turns itself back off again after you've made one picture. 
Finally on this wheel is the exposure settings. This is actually something for maybe if you're a little bit more advanced or if the picture is something that has weird lighting happening. Uh, you can actually change just how bright the picture is by either bumping up the exposure two stops or making it darker. It should default to normal after you've made the picture, so that shouldn't be a problem. But if you want to, uh, if you're say standing under shade with a whole bunch of people and it's really bright outside and the exposure isn't working for you, you can actually force the exposure by the little plus and minus symbol. All right, so those are the main settings on the back. Uh, the other things to worry about is if we're on the play setting, things change a little bit. Um, you can scroll through the different pictures that are on this camera. just by back and forth. Let's say I don't like this picture of my tummy because I'm embarrassed about it. There's a trash button. If I push the trash button, I can delete the single by saying yes. Or if I push the trash button, I can delete multi, which will let me choose different pictures to take pictures of. I want to delete that one. I want to delete that one, etc. Or there's the delete all. Delete all is a good thing to do after you've taken all your pictures, you've gotten it into your computer and you're all happy. Um, that being said, uh, please delete all. We have found embarrassing things on these cameras when people didn't erase things. You don't want us to find those things because then they live forever and we make fun of you forever. So I'm going to delete all the pictures I've made on this camera and now there's no valid picture to play. I'm going to turn the switch back on the camera because that's where it should be when we check it out to you. And that's the whole kit and caboodle. Uh, one last thing, when you want to plug this into the computer, the best thing to do is first turn it off. So I'm going to turn off the camera. The USB port on this camera is this tiny little guy here. And you'll notice that the USB cable that's included with the camera has the typical normal computer USB. And it has this really horrible tiny little weird thing here for this camera. Uh, Plug that in, plug this into your computer with the camera actually still off. It will automatically turn on and turn into a little mini hard drive on your desktop. If it doesn't do that, then come to PEPS and we'll help you figure out why it's not doing that. This is the final part of this little uh, tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have any more questions, you can always call PEPS at 507-222-7070 or email us at peps at carlton.edu. Thanks very much for watching, folks. Bye.